Professor Tomlinson with you once again, uh, playing some blues this morning, blues walk in particular by Clifford Brown once again. Uh, this time we're looking at blues walk in C, all right? We're gonna start transposing this tune. Um, so you should be uh, looking at the chart that says blues walk in concert C. And what we're doing with the chords this time is we're following the same chord sequence, but we've inverted the left hand voicings um, to keep, again, to keep our chords in that good register uh, on the keyboard. So, uh, uh, same format, starting on the one seventh chord, or one dominant seventh chord, okay? But in this case, the third is gonna be the lower interval. All right, the E is the third, and B flat is the seventh, okay? All right, so that forms that, that uh, voicing for C7. Okay, and our bass player, once again, hopefully is gonna frequently play the root of the chord, fill that out. Okay, and then uh, again, just like in B flat, to go from the one chord to the four chord is so easy. Just lower both of those notes by a half step. And now you've got the seventh on the bottom of that F seventh chord, right? Call that the minor seventh, the, the interval. We talked about the intervals before, okay? And the major third. Those are the those are the ingredients that we need for this dominant seventh chord. And then, boom, we're just right back to it for two measures. F7 again for two measures. C7. Okay, and here's where things get uh, a little bit more interesting. Uh, A seventh. Right. Again, remember, in each case, we're going to lift our hand and go upward for the sixth chord because that's going to allow smooth voice leading to come back down to our C7th chord, okay? So the uh, C7th was spelled 3, 7, E, B flat, okay? The A7th will be spelled 7, 3, or G, C sharp, okay? Don't forget to make the, the C into a C sharp, otherwise... Uh, we're, we uh, don't have our major third, which is the ingredient that we need for that A seventh chord. Finally, D minor seven. Okay, the minor seven is the one that doesn't sound like, have that biting tritone kind of sound to it, or flat five kind of sound to it. The minor, okay, doesn't have that sound. And when we add the root to it, minor seventh kind of sound. Okay, and again, it's nice with the smooth voice leading how easy it is to play this chord progression because for the D minor seventh to go to G seventh, all I need to do is lower the C down to B. And now I'm voicing the seventh and the third of G seventh. And then repeat those chords as a turnaround. And I'm back to the, to the top. You may have noticed that I, uh, I comped a little bit more freely with my left hand this time. Um, and you can start to do that. It's, it's kind of fun. It makes it a little bit more swinging. Uh, start with, you know, the simple whole, whole notes for the left hand. Uh, and then once you've really got everything coordinated, the melody is perfect and the chords are very easy for you, uh, go ahead and especially in places where maybe it's a little bit, uh, the melody is a little bit simpler and more static. Um, go ahead and be a little, a little bit freer with your left hand. You know, maybe anticipate the chords. One, two, three, four. Right, I'm anticipating one and three, two, three, four. Can sound pretty swinging, okay? Or kind of sprinkle some anticipations around and some downbeats around, okay? Uh, if everything is an anticipation, sometimes that's not ideal. Okay, so blues walk in the key of C. As you can see at the top of the chart, uh, this um, set of chord voicings is gonna be best for the keys of B, C, D flat, D, uh, D, E flat, and E, okay? Keep your chords in a good register. Now, those of you who've been listening to Clifford Brown, and I hope you have been, might have noticed that I simplified this lead sheet just a little bit, um, and, uh, it's an important sound, actually, but I think the tune still sounds really great uh, as I wrote it out. But um, uh, the way Clifford actually plays the, the, um, 
the third measure going into the fourth measure. He actually plays a pickup to that E natural in the fourth measure. Okay, um, I thought it still sounded good and it's going to be a lot easier. There's going to be a lot of work, you know, transposing this tune to all 12 keys. So I made it a little bit simpler. But this is a really important sound, uh, those of you who are interested in starting to get into some uh, improvisation. The idea of approaching a note, that's taking a note that's in your basic scale and leading into it uh, from, some, from a note that may or may not be in the scale. In this case, uh, D sharp or E flat. Okay, so that's approaching the E uh, from a half step below. Okay, a lot of different examples of how we can take that approach note to the third of the chord. And come up with a lot of like very cool kind of jazz sounding riffs. So that's a really important uh, uh, aspect of, of improvisation, okay? The notes that are in your basic scale, but then the ability to approach notes. Here's above and below. And that's what Clifford does, right? He plays F, D sharp, E. Great sound, okay? If you have above and below, uh, it could also be called an enclosure. And then I've polished it off with a chord voicing. I kept the third and the seventh and the left. I could have voiced it like this with a shell in my left, and very often a shell is just the, the root in the third or the root in the seventh. And here's, here's that upper voicing, E, A, D. It's kind of a fourthy voicing. It sounds probably better even better like that. All right, so as we're going along, just a couple of ending kind of sounds that are a little bit optional, but they're kind of fun. You also probably have noticed the uh, lower part of the sheet where uh, it's, uh, I'm giving you some sample uh, two-handed voicings uh, that you could use comping uh, in a combo. All right, again, this is kind of optional. This is above what we're, uh, you know, have to do. But uh, I just took the left-hand voicings that we, we used for the melody, C7th, F7th. And then with my right hand, I added two notes. And in the case of the dominant chords, I'm adding uh, upper extensions, the ninth and the thirteenth. So the C seventh, I added the D, which is the ninth. The ninth is equivalent to, to two, right? Then I added the thirteenth. The thirteenth is the equivalent to six. Nine equals two, thirteen equals six. And then for F seventh, all right, my voicing got flipped around, my left hand voicing. Now D becomes 13, and G becomes 9, 6, 2, or 13, 9. Come back to it, and here's a common uh, jazz voicing, uh, uh, a dominant chord called altered. What I did is I flatted the 9th and the 13th, and hear how nicely that goes down to my F13. All right, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this video uh, going over this because it's really kind of optional, not really um, required for the class. All right, so have fun with Blues Walk in the Key of C this week. All right, guys?